What's up, guys? Uh, I have so many questions over the last few days that I couldn't hardly get back to you all on about casting and gear and tackle and why can't I cast far enough and what lure and reel or rod and reel are you using. So I'm going to try and, and do a, a quick series on tackle and rods and reels and, and what matters and not necessarily in the game but this is based off of real life experience which this is a simulator and most of this, this stuff should apply if it already doesn't um, according to what I've read so he, here's kind of a breakdown for you so in general the longer the rod the further the cast you get so before we get into all the specifics of how the game works and how it functions everything let's go into just taking this rod for example so you can see the length of it's six foot ten. The lure weight. This is the ideal range of the lure weight you want to use for this rod. If you use something heavier, you're going to get a poor cast. If you use something lighter, same thing applies. Then you have the power, which is known IRL is what's called the action. Basically, you typically want to pick a rod based off of the weight and fight of the species you're going to tackle. So ultralight is usually designed around panfish. Uh, crappie, sunfish, bluegill, those types of things are typically what you're going to want to use an ultralight for. However, you can land largemouth, smallmouth, those smaller species of fish, even walleye are, are, are typically targeted on ultralights depending on w how you're fishing. Um, ultralights would be used for things like jigs in this, this weight range um, and probably really small spoons or spinners. So the next thing you'll see there is line weight and the line weight is the weight of the line it's pretty basic that you want to utilize so um when you see when you see that line weight and often you're putting on lines in the game that say this is too heavy it may cause damage to the rod that's because you're over the line weight or you're using too heavy of a braid um for what the the uh, rod is able to tackle that means that your your rod's going to break before your line's going to break um not always, but it can damage the rod, and that's where it comes from. In these cases in real life is usually when you'd see a lot of broken eyelets or rod tips. Uh, and the reason I know all this is uh, I worked in a bait shop for almost 20 years and consulted for one. So these are where all of my experience is coming from. I probably should have started with that. Um, two piece is just the rod comes in two pieces it's plain and simple um two pieces are are, are easier to, to for a convenience standpoint in real life but most of the time they don't have as good of a backbone or be able to horse a fish as much with a two-piece rod versus one piece um then you have how many guides which are these little guys here that will come on the rod so what we're looking at is a spinning rod. Now, a spinning rod are used for spinning reels, like this. You also have casting rods, um, which are used for casting reels. And you can see we don't have access to any of those when we're fishing. But casting reels will have the hook on the back side of them. And those are a little different from spinning rods. So um, I'll kind of switch the screen a little bit so you guys can see if you're using a casting rod, you usually can get further casts, heavier hook sets, um, and you most people use a little bit heavier line with a uh, casting rod and a casting reel combo. Um, this, again, is mostly real-life experience. With a spinning rod, they're going to be used for lighter baits like jigs and jig heads, um, and uh, there are actually rods in the game that are specific for jigs. Uh, now, whether or not that affects your performance, I don't know. What I can tell you is that the rod does not limit the type of fish you can catch, nor does the line, nor does the reel. It won't limit what you can hook up with, I should say, not necessarily catch. Because your rod or reel might not be durable, durable enough to land that fish. But according to the devs, they did say on the Steam uh, forums that it doesn't matter what you're using. That doesn't limit uh, the ability to catch a certain fish. So, um, in stating that, we'll kind of move on to um, kind of the basics of casting. So, when you're looking at casting, if you, we go back to the tackle selection and we look at lines, if you're using line that is too light or too heavy for the rod and reel that you're using, you are not going to be able to cast as far. Ideally, you want to, with a light line, you want to use a heavier lure. 
and that will give you more casting distance. If you use a heavy line and a, and a um, light lure, you're not going to be able to throw it at all. Um, and that's just the way that, that reels are designed. So try and keep an eye on the reels that you buy. And um, I'll be doing another video right after this where I'll go through the basics of the reels and how you should use those and what that looks like. Um, make sure the reel you're buying will complement the rod that you're buying and vice versa. Don't just buy it because it's the best for your level. You might be buying a casting rod for, and you only have a spinning reel. So with that, hopefully that helps you guys and it gives you a little bit of an explanation. Um, again, they did basically say on the Steam forums that this doesn't affect the amount of fish you can hook up. So try not to worry about that as much. Be more concerned with your presentation and the type of retrieve you're using and the type of lure you're using. So hook size really, really is a big factor. So with that, thank you guys for all the support with Fishing Planet. I appreciate all the views and all the questions. Hopefully that alleviates some of them for rods. So I'll be doing another one on the reels. Uh, right after this, so hopefully I can give you guys an explanation on that too, and hopefully that'll clear some questions up.